Hello guys, in this video I'll be showing you the autosomal DNA, so the predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a Middle Ages neo Aleut. Excuse me if I'm pronouncing this incorrectly, I don't know what uh, uh, how to pronounce Aleut correctly, but this is basically a Native American group to Alaska. This was a female who lived before the European colonization of Alaska. And uh, this is her predicted phenotype. With Mina Shakot, she's predicted to have dark brown eyes, snub-shaped nose, and black hair, which is how I depicted her hair. Uh, Ysek predicted her to have all that, plus also sort of a brown skin tone. But I did not depict her with a brown skin tone, I depicted her with more of an olive or white skin tone, because with Snipper Free, she's predicted to have white skin, actually, which is why uh, she has white skin in the image that I'm showing you here. And... Um, she did not have any of the SLC45A2 mutations that contribute to light skin in Europeans, which is, you know, not surprising, she's not a European. She had blue eye haplotype 1, she had BH1, which pretty much every non-African has, but she did not have BH2 or 3 or 4. And those mutations are really the mutations that matter when it comes to blue versus brown eyes, so she definitely had a brown eye color. In Pro319 Pro variant of DRD2, she did not have the European no-go learner mutation that protects against schizophrenia. Well, she's not a European, so obviously not. And uh, she, she had A2A2 genotype in TAC1, which is also a very common genotype for every human, actually. But chimpanzees and gorillas, they tend to have A1A1 here. In uh, Comte's Valmet variation, she's got Valmet, which means heterozygous, which means she's got one uh, warrior allele and one non-warrior allele. Now, this is a typical... A uh, typical genotype for a European, for example, I'm a European, I have the same genotype, but East Asians and Native Americans, they tend to have more Valval genotypes here, and she did not have derived OXTR, which is what I call on my channel the sociopath gene, so she did not have the sociopath gene, and uh, she actually did not have the European mutation for lactose persistence, which is not so, not so surprising, right, because she's not a European, so obviously she doesn't have this mutation, but she did have, she did have the European mutation that protects against myopia, which is very interesting. And she did have derived EDAR, which is an East Asian mutation for uh, East Asian phenotypes such as shovel-shaped incisors and epicanthic folds and the rest. So she definitely had an East Asian phenotype, but she did not have the East Asian alcohol flush mutation. And in case you don't know what alcohol flush reaction or East Asian flush is, and by the way, I recently learned about this as well, and there's apparently a genotype for it, which is so surprising, but it's apparently a condition that affects some Chinese, Japanese, and Koreans who show Characteristic physiological responses to drinking alcohol that includes facial flushing, nausea, headaches, and a fast heart rate. Data from Wikipedia. Now that we've established that she did not have the East Asian flush, let's move on to polygenic traits. She had a high risk score for Crohn's disease. She had a super high risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, she had a pretty high risk score for coronary heart disease. She had a pretty high risk score for type 2 diabetes. She had a pretty average, below average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, she had a pretty average risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, she had a pretty average risk score for asthma. And she actually had a pretty average, maybe above average risk score for brain aneurysm. And uh, this is what she scores with Eurogene's K13. Now here she's scoring mostly Amerindian, but actually a little bit Siberian too. And this is because the second wave of migration into America from Siberia was very modern, like similar to modern Siberian. So they brought a lot of East Eurasian, a lot of Siberian like ancestry here. And she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of North Amerindian plus Tuvinian or Buryat. And if you don't know what those are, those are groups in Siberia. Here's what she scores with Eurogenes K36. Now here she's scoring actually Siberian plus Amerindian for the most part, but she's actually also scoring a little bit of Finnescandian, uh, which is very exotic for the region. And um, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Eskimo plus Amerindian North on G25. So she clearly, uh, clearly not quite as a and E, not quite as uh, first wave, not quite as Amerindian as American Indians in America and Mexico are. So very much shifted towards the Eskimos and later Siberian newcomers. And here is what she scores with MDLPK11. Once again, you can see the first wave of migration here is represented by the Amerindian category and the second wave by the Siberian category. She's scoring a mixture of Amerindian and Siberian. And with the Oracle, she's actually closest to Burnkirk Arctic, which I'm not sure what kind of a uh, culture that is, I haven't really researched into it, but she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of this Burnkirk Ar Arctic plus some kind of an Amerindian individual. This is what she scores with Harappa World, and I kind of like this calculator better because here they make the distinction between Beringian, which is what her ancestors were, and Siberian. So there's a difference here, right? She's scoring, she's not scoring that much Siberian actually, and she's getting modeled as a mixture of Chukchi plus Totonac or Maya, so basically the same thing. 
pretty much the same exact result as what you've seen with G25 previously. This is what she scores with Pandian and LK10, also Beringian and Amerindian, but she's actually also scoring 2.4% uh, European hunter-gatherer ancestry. Is it from Eastern hunter-gatherers? Is it some kind of a remainder from ancient North Eurasians? I don't know, I can't tell you, but it's an exotic component. This is what she scores with ancient Eurasia K6, mostly East Asian, perhaps not as East Asian as the Inuits, but definitely much more East Asian than the Native Americans in the United States and Mexico, and less ancestral North Eurasian than them too. And this is what she scores with Gedrosia K3, she's actually got some West Eurasian here, and this is all because of the ancient North Eurasian admixture that she's got. Thank you guys for watching my video until the end. You can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description, and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed my video.